No. And now before I start, not all of you have met a Canadian before, so I'll just explain we're exactly like Americans except for three things. Canadians have three things Americans don't have, and that is geographical awareness, <laughs> awareness of one's own surroundings, and the last thing is um, awareness. That's the last thing. <laughs> also, uh, Canadians, when we travel, we put a flag on our backpacks so people don't mistake us for Americans. Um, uh, Americans don't wear backpacks because their shoulders are too fat, so it's very, very small difference there. <laughs> the Canadians, we sound, almost sound this, the Canadians say things like, um, I love traveling abroad to other countries. Americans say things like, what's abroad mean? Is that outside of Kentucky? I don't understand. I got my, I got my caravan, I got my gun, I got my chicken. I don't need to go outside of no fucking Kentucky. It's almost sound the same. <laughs> now, I live in uh, Malmo. Do you know where that is? Southern Sweden? It's Skinner. Terrible accent down there, isn't it? Hey, that's why we are I think a, a Swede and a Dane just started puking on each other for no reason to make this accent. <laughs> Norwegian's so cute. All the little tougher. So cute, isn't it? I love languages and accents. It's very interesting. You know, did you know that the word for, in prostit for prostitute in Danish is? <laughs> if you're in a if you're in a park in Copenhagen playing with Lego, and and for no reason a random uh, short Latvian prostitute comes by, tells you a lie, steals your Lego and runs away. In English, you would yell at her, that's a normal sentence, you little damn lying Latvian Lego playing little hooker. <laughs> but in Danish, this is the most amazing sentence of all time in the history of the universe. Because you'd yell, It's good to be back. I, uh, I was here four years ago, I, I had a really strange experience in the toilet in the hallway up there. After the show, I was watching my, washing my hands. A drunk Norwegian guy came in the toilet and he's like, uh, Hey, funny man. Did you ever hear the story of when a man went into a toilet and another man followed him and it was awkward? I guess this is awkward, man. <laughs> and he's like, hey, and then funny man, you can think about this. And then he left. <laughs> And they're, and they're really, 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 you guys are so cute, you know? And the, the, you're so cute how your accent, it's, the, even if a Norwegian is trying to be evil, it just sounds cozy to hang out with them, doesn't it? Like, I, welcome to Oslo, would you like to come to my winter cabin in the fjords? And then I'm going to murder you and disintegrate the body, eh? <laughs> sounds cozy, when do we leave? <laughs> right? And even when a Norwegian is angry, they sound so cute. I was walking home through Slotsparken last night to the hotel, and I saw this guy having a pee against a tree, but the tree was on a little hill. So he's having trouble because the pee kept coming back towards his feet. And then he's like, Yola Baka! He's like, Oh, Yola Baka! <laughs> I was walking around today, it's very, very lovely, crisp air, and you can, you can even you can, you can close your eyes and you know you're in Norway because like, Ah, oh, such crisp, wonderful air, isn't it? You can do that. You can do that in other countries. You can close your eyes, and you know you're in France because you smell all the fresh baguettes and, and people having afternoon hotel, afternoon affairs in hotel rooms. It's just fantastic. <laughs> you know you're in England because you can close your eyes and you just can smell all the disenchantment and disillusionment in, in the air. It's just fantastic. It's a wonderful place to live. <laughs> and you you can close your eyes. You know you know you're in Germany because there's no smell. <laughs> Because due to perfectly German engineered ventilation, with all orders neutralized, the air quality is perfectly satisfactory for everyone at all times. Oh. <laughs> now, I was uh, having dinner today on the way here. I went, it was at a brew pub, and I had a couple sausages and mashed potatoes, 280 crowns. That's a lot of money, not for Norwegians, of course. Pocket change, right? <laughs> 280 Norwegian crowns. You could feed a family of eight 
for like four weeks in some third world poor, poor developing country like, like, like Sweden for that money. <laughs> Oh, uh, Norwegians, you love feeling superior to Swedes, don't you? A Norwegian yelling at a Swede, hey, Swede, at ah, Olympics, ah, ah. What you got, two bronze and a participation medal? <laughs> ah, Swede, oil and money, ah, ah, ah. Swede, ah, I'm amazing, ah. ah. <laughs> now, um, I am Canadian and we make fun of Americans more. Should we do that? Yes, now. All the Hollywood movies, what happens when an alien comes down from outer space, what happens? They always land in the States and end up speaking English. What are the odds of that? <laughs> the States is 6% of the world's service area, 6%. Pacific Ocean, 40%. E.T. should have just landed in the Pacific and drowned. <laughs> just a five minute mini documentary. <laughs> One line in that movie, E.T. <coughs> Phone not waterproof. <coughs> Uh, what about what about E.T. landing in other countries? What would those movies be like? E.T. landing in Ireland? Instead of putting little candies for him to follow, the pull of pints of Guinness for him to follow. And everyone in Ireland would be like, come on, little fucker. Follow the fucking Guinness, you little fucker. <laughs> E.T. landing in Oslo? I think he would the spaceship would land and stop sparking. And there'd be the guy, you know, ah, I'm a fucker. <laughs> What is this fucking spaceship? <laughs> I think the best would be E.T. landing in Finland. Just some three hour dark drama in the woods, no dialogue. And in the movie, some big Finnish guy named Yarmo comes out of the woods, he's like, E.T. No phone home. E.T. sauna time. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of comics give advice to couples and things. I need to give advice to all the single men here. Okay, you want to meet a nice lady, this is what you do. Go to Helsinki on a Friday or Saturday. Go to the biggest nightclub you can find. Go to the middle of the dance floor one hour before it closes. And just stand. Upright. That's all you have to do. Every other man in the bar is a horizontal drunk Finnish guy. Puking in a corner. Some of their Danish guys peek around Latvian prostitutes with you know. Within five seconds, eight Finnish women approach you from ten different angles. The math doesn't add up, but they make it work. They all think to themselves, Oh, he can perform sexually. Okay, poof, I take you on. Now, ladies, do you agree men from different countries have different success with their accents when they flirt? Right? A French guy, quite successful, you know, he's like, oh, bonjour. Dutch guy, not very successful. It's, it's nice to meet you. You're quite satisfactory to be around most of the time. If you pay 50% of the bill 100% of the time, or 100% of the bill 50% of the time, this is more satisfactory. The lady is a nice Spanish guy, right? Spanish guy, he's like, hola. My name is Juan Barton. I'm the nephew of Javier Barden. I am going to make love to you 17 times. Like, Did you say 17 or 70? Both. <laughs> I think a Norwegian guy being flirty, ladies, it's, it's like uh, there's some guy named Ospjorn, and he's like, uh, it's in Randy. Uh, it's nice to meet you in the, in the bar. Uh, would you like to come home? We make some pita pan and then I have a bag of box. <laughs> and then uh, we can do the bumpa bumpa. Huh? <laughs> now before I go, the last thing, a German guy trying to flirt, right? It's not really flirting, it's just instructions, isn't it? He's like, also, welcome to the foreplay. If you want the eine finger, say das is good with eine finger. <laughs> If you want zwei finger, say das is good zwei finger. If you want the feasting, say das is good with feasting. Then I shall proceed with the most efficient intercourse styles in doggy style. Do you know this? Goes like this. Just like the German trains, always on time. Into station, out of station. Into station, out of station. Into station, out of station. Then, after a little while, I will reach the orgasm and I will signify this with arriving to the final station. We say, oomph, I arrive on time. 
last five times. Thank you.